where other states are investing resources in how do we help these people not come back into the prison system, California is not. The United States locks up more prisoners than any other country in the world. And in the country holding the most prisoners in the world, California is the state that incarcerates more people than any other. California's prisons are so overcrowded that the Supreme Court ruled them in violation of the Eighth Amendment's Cruel and Unusual Punishment Clause. The current state of the prison system in California is, is, is troubled. Adrian Moore is Vice President of Research at Reason Foundation. He says California's prisons are overcrowded in large part because of their inability to keep released felons from reoffending. We accept in California this revolving door of inmates that no other state is willing to accept, and it's way past time we started addressing that. A staggering 65% of those released from California's prisons will one day return. Moore lays much of the blame with political interest groups, particularly the state's powerful prison guard union. The CCPOA, the California Prison Guards Union, it has long been a really powerful political force in California. They are you know, leading advocates of not putting money into programs to reduce recidivism, but instead to put the money into the prison guards and the prison facilities, and they are for just locking more people up. The CCPOA and other law enforcement groups have consistently lobbied for and received more and more prisons and more and more workers to staff those prisons. But building more cages hasn't alleviated the overcrowding. The more prisons California has, the more prisoners its courts seem to fill them up with. In addition to lobbying for more staff and funding, the unions and their affiliated interest groups have also put political capital and lots of money into defeating reforms to the prison system, such as Prop 36, which would have substituted substance abuse treatment for incarceration for nonviolent offenders, or Prop 66, which would have reduced the number of crimes eligible for a life sentence. Most crucially, the union was the largest contributor to California's Three Strikes Law. It imposes mandatory 25-year-to-life sentences for third-time offenders, even if the third felony is not serious or violent. We do lobby for stronger laws on the book that we can use to to put people away because these are people that are preying on the citizens of California. Ron Cottingham is the president of PORAC, the Peace Officers Research Association of California. The CCPOA has surprisingly sat out the fight against three strikes reform this year, but PORAC has contributed $100,000 to defeating a ballot initiative called Prop 36 that's aimed at requiring the third strike to be a serious felony before triggering the automatic 25-year-to-life sentence. The people had thought that when we voted for that law that we were going to be putting away uh, serious uh, violent criminals like murders and rapists and child molesters. Dorothy Erskine's nephew, Brian Smith, was one of the first prisoners in California to be sentenced under three strikes. His third strike was shoplifting linens from a department store. He served 18 of his 25-year sentence so far. We believe that three strikes is working. Uh, we saw an immediate reduction in the crime rate in California uh, in 1990, shortly after 1994 when it was passed and implemented the first time. It is true that crime has declined since three strikes went into effect in 1994, but that decline has been seen nationwide and in states that don't have the same prison overcrowding problems as California does. And I'm not saying that they don't need to be incarcerated if they have transgressed the law, but I just feel like it needs to be some type of balance. If you're looking for an imbalance in the way people are sentenced, I mean, again, the person that is, is sentenced for 25 to life uh, for committing their third strike, which right now is, is any felony, uh, you're looking at a person who is, that's their lifestyle. That's what they're doing. 327 California inmates received their third strike from a petty theft. More than 3,500 are serving a 25 to life sentence for a nonviolent, non serious crime. And more than 1,300 of those are incarcerated for a nonviolent drug offense. Are people in the drug category something that should be looked at? The drug offense. Uh, again, you'd have to look at, probably have to go through the records and look at each one and how they were committed, what type of crime it was, 
uh, what type of drug it was because you know certain drugs just by their definition and their schedule uh, are felonies to possess. Questions of justice aside, the California State Auditor's Office estimates the cost of incarcerating these nonviolent criminals under the three strikes guidelines at $7.5 billion. But PORAC and CCPOA both say that more prisons and more prison guards are the ultimate solution. When the dominoes start rolling down, what we're naturally going to see is there is going to be a need for more local corrections people and for more uh, local peace officers. Uh, there has to be a balance to be able to, to work and handle the caseloads that are going to come around. They are following their own self-interest which is to have the prison system in California continue to be large and to grow over time. And they have been very successful at that. Mm -hmm.